This is the PR Podcast, a show about how public relations helps you tell your story to the world. We talk with great PR practitioners who have the skills, creativity, and just plain savvy to get their clients noticed. Now here's your host, Jody Fisher. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the PR Podcast. I'm Jody Fisher. Thanks for joining us. Well, make sure you join me for my Instagram Live uh, PR talk from the PR garage. Those of you who follow me on social media know that I do all my work here in the PR garage, which is basically just my garage in my house uh, that I set up when we when we're all in COVID uh, and we're all setting up our our home offices. Um, I didn't have space for a home office, and my wife and my family were all home, and the garage was the only place that I could find to be alone. So it became the PR garage, and that's where I do all my work from. That's where we record the podcast from, uh, and we do an Instagram live every Thursday at two p.m. Eastern time. Uh, please tune into that. We do just fifteen or twenty minutes, really nothing long, right? You see these Instagram lives; they go for hours. Um, 15 minutes, we talk about what's going on in PR. Uh, I have a little game that I like to play called Why Is This News, where I grab a story out of the my local newspaper and I give my two cents on why I think this story got reported and what went into the successful pitch that landed it in the newspaper. But I also want to hear your ideas. Send me some articles as well and tell me why you think a particular piece that you caught in your local news market became news. Anyway, all that to say, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Instagram Live from the PR Garage. Please join us on there. Now let's get on with our show for today. Mona Kinal is the CMO of G2A, the world's largest marketplace for digital entertainment, including games, gift cards, subscriptions, software, and e-learning. This latest global brand challenge sees her working across more than 100 markets to launch innovative solutions. In her 20 years in global e Mona has also served, among others, as the head of communications emerging markets at Viacom and head of communications Central Europe at Discovery Networks. Mona, welcome to the PR podcast. Wow, thank you. Wow, that was quite of an intro. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Hello, hello, everyone. I hope it's going to be a fantastic uh, time, and I'm so ready to jump in, like, straight away after such an intro. We're going to have a great show. Now, you were telling me uh, before we started taping, you live and work in Spain, yes? Yes, indeed, I am. I'm based in uh, uh, Tenerife, uh, with a fantastic weather at the moment, uh, and actually throughout the whole the year, with ocean by my side uh, where I can surf. Uh, so yeah, it is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> oh, that, that's that sounds fantastic. Our current weather right here on Long Island is overcast and rainy. So appreciate you sending some warm weather our way. Definitely, um, I'm kind wanna... of a witch, so I'm sending through all this great energy to all of you guys there and all this wonderful weather and vibes. <laughs> we'll take it. But you are also the first guest that we've had on from Spain. So wanted to call that out too. Thank you so much for listening to the PR podcast. Uh, tell us about tell us about G2A. Tell us about your company and how you manage communications for them. All right, so uh, G2A.com, as you have just said, is the la world's largest and most trusted marketplace for digital entertainment, where more than 30 million people from 180 countries have purchased over 100 million items so far. User can choose from more than 75,000 digital offerings, as you mentioned before, including games, DLCs, in-game items, as well as plenty of non-gaming offerings, such as gift cards, subscriptions, software, or uh, e-learning, and all that sold by uh, quality and verified sellers from all over the world. Uh, only last year, we had over 250 million visits at G2A.com. Uh, and also, it's worth mentioning in the current world of uh, digital uh, or all digital, that we are actually leading the way also in online security, which is very, very important. We've been awarded with mm, a prestigious uh, American CNP award, for example, alongside companies such as Microsoft, Barclays Bank, or uh, First Data. Uh, so 
this is just a short intro uh, about the company and a little background of what to expect from this conversation. So give me an example. If, if I'm a consumer, right? If I'm a consumer, why would I be coming to G2A? What would I be purchasing from you or why would I be interacting with you? So basically, uh, we are one-stop destination for digital entertainment. So if you are looking for, first, inspiration on how you can spend your quality time uh, yourself or with your friends or with your family, that's exactly where you should come. Or if you just want to look what's new out there in the world of digital uh, entertainment, it's again us where you can find all those items, basically, and purchase them very easily because what we are actually uh, looking uh, for throughout our work is how to make life of everyone in the digital world easier, how to make this digital entertainment more accessible for everyone, despite location, gender, age, or the uh, skills one might have in a, in a digital world, because there are different generations that these days are out there in a digital world. So we want to make it all very, very easy and pleasurable for everyone. It, it's amazing the world that we live in. I mean, I, I'm Gen X, right? And so when when mm -hmm. I was a kid, we all dreamed about, you know, being able to turn on a screen and having everything at our fingertips. Fast forward 20 or 30 or 40 years, and it's all in front of us, right? We can literally turn on any screen, whether it sits in our hands or it hangs on our wall, uh, or it's frankly also in our car, and we can we can watch movies, we can listen to music, we can play games, we can do just any of this stuff. And, and G2A is kind of a hub for that, right? Definitely, believe it or not, but I still remember, I'm also Gen um, Generation X, I still remember the times when back in Poland, when I, when I used to live, uh, we had a TV that was black and white, and when we were turning it on, it actually needed like minimum of 10 minutes oh, yeah. to actually <laughs> get switched on. And then I remember also a day when my friends came uh, from uh, abroad and said, look, there is this thing, it's called internet, and we're like, but what is this? This is a place where you can actually look for whatever you want to find out. And I was like, but but what exactly? Anything. And we we're like, but 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 how? And no one was actually aware of anything like that. And look, after not that many years after, we are talking, you know, you are in New York, I'm in Tenerife, we are talking about this world of digital, all digital, Web3, uh, AI, and all this stuff that's, wow, amazing, right? Yeah, it, it's amazing. I know you you have kids, I have kids, and yeah. I hate to sound like a boomer shaking my fist at the sky, but <laughs> these kids don't understand how, what an amazing world <laughs> that we frankly <laughs> have created. I mean, not me personally, but like our generation, like we made all this stuff because we wanted it. When we How were exciting it, it is actually right now. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, Quite so a with all this, with all this innovation and with all the all the content that you can find on G2A, um, on the one hand, you would think that if people know about it, they go to it, but you still have to let people know people might not know that it's out there, right? Um, how do you go about connecting? Is most of your work? Well, I'm asking three questions at once. Let me slow down. Number one. How do you manage the communications funnel out to the audiences you want to be talking to? How are you how are you communicating out? So basically, I would say that there are a few pillars that you need to basically rely or, or build on. First would be creating a vision that is consistent but simple at the same time. So for us, it's this one-stop destination for digital entertainment. This is where you start building all other elements around like offering, uh, technology and all this process behind uh, the customer experience, the customer dialogue, uh, just to focus on this priority, which would be this digital entertainment. Then uh, you need appealing, very well-defined brand strategy and then a non-standard marketing approach, which would be this 360 marketing approach uh, that would serve the needs and expectations of your customers. Then you need to have these customers very well defined so you can respond to their needs with a very well profiled, personalized communication. And then 
to stay relevant with this global but also localized approach, which is all a, a really big uh, challenge. Uh, when speaking of brands, I would say this is strategic things thing basically. And for G2A.com, we developed the strategy that I'm personally very proud of because G2A stands for gate to adventure. So basically by using this brand archetypes methodology, I could explain it that as the, as the explorer, G2A inspires. We recommend or help to discover everyone what's best in, the, in this digital entertainment, what's worth paying attention to. But at the same time, as, a, as the caregiver, we stand for this safe environment. We create this safety for everyone in digital world. We make this process of purchasing digital goods accessible, uh, despite, as I mentioned before, uh, those the digital skills or location, age, gender, or whatever you might think of. So basically, our mission is to democratize digital entertainment for everyone. So they have best digital adventures at their fingertips. Uh, and the thing is that we need to reach as many customers as possible in the shortest moment. So basically, you need to be smart, creative, uh, to meet the expectations, to deliver on the promise, uh, and to be, in a way, standing out of a very fierce and tough competition that is out there. So this is the challenge. And whoever can figure, uh, figure that out first and whoever that, uh, can create this unique recipe or add this very specific flavor, it is kind of art of like art of cooking, you know, I would say you are going to win, right? Well, I, I got to tell you, everything you just ran down there are the basic building blocks of yeah. good communication whether it's PR and you're pitching stories to reporters like I do, or whether you're communicating out to consumers like you're doing, um, or you're doing stuff on social media or anything else, it's basic building blocks of communication. It's clear, it's concise, it's compelling. Um, it, it's got a call to action. It's sort of, it, it activates people and says, here, it drives them to the thing you want them to see. I got to imagine a lot of what you do too is, I'm going to use the word curation, like you have to organize the site and you have to drive people in a clear way to the thing that they're looking for, right? Because the, the kiss of death is if they can't find the thing, they're gone, right? Yeah, definitely. So first you need to get their attention, whether it's via this amazing storytelling or the channel you are communicating through or um, then via offering that you've been trying to sell and actually um, trying to tell them that this is something that might they might need or if they need it, you are the best destination actually to purchase it. So then you need to have the best offering behind. And it's not these days usually just a single product. You need to think beyond that. You need to, you need to try to localize them with some extra benefits uh, and, um, and um, make sure that they know when to come back or, or how or encourage them to frequently come back to your place. Uh, so yeah, this is a difficult and very challenging, but also very exciting process these days because audiences these days are very conscious, very aware of what they can expect. And they are also very demanding. So these days, it's not a simple game, I would say. It is a very uh, complex very tough day, uh, and especially for us when we have very diverse audiences because we still communicate with hard uh, with hard gamers, right? With uh, this most gaming related uh, audience, and then we also speak to casual gamers, and then also to non gamers. So look how complex our campaigns need to be to be relevant to all of those. Yeah, it it is is got to be a challenging job. Um, just yeah. taking care of the gamers, I would imagine, is challenging because gamers are a tough audience. Gamers, oh yeah, they have are. No problem telling you if they love you or if they hate you, right? <laughs> Definitely. But you know, uh, this is something we've been uh, kind of uh, raised on because we've been uh, this place for gamers since the very beginning. 
and we have started uh, from esport, you know, uh, many, many years ago when it was still a, a very new thing to the world as such. You know, we have invested uh, to date over uh, $12 million on esport, you know, partnership events supporting over 70 teams uh, and over 110 tournaments all over the world. Uh, and this is not over for us. We now uh, partnering also with an offline sport. So we are taking this one step forward. So basically trying to show our audiences that there are synergies between the two, between the digital sport and the offline sport. So it's not enough now to just be in the digital sport. You need to show other audiences that they can actually take advantage of those synergies, that they can create those synergies, that they can actually uh, grow by using and connecting those two words, uh, worlds. So basically we started, for example, last year, this cooperation with uh, Drift Masters European Championships uh, where, uh, you know, there are all those amazing uh, racers and they all were kind of raced on gaming, you know, playing Assetto Corsa, you know, and trying to improve the skills, then to race actually on those amazing um, um, races, basically. So uh, we cooperate also with influencers, the digital influencers, you know, the gaming influencers, but also now with this real life sport influencers, including, you know, this um, uh, former F1, Danny Klaus or Paweł Korpulinski, who is Polish uh, and Swedish drift champion, or Ruben Bolanos, the Spanish drift champion, or Ola Mirosław, who is, you know, like multi-world title holder with the speed climbing going to Olympics pretty soon. So this is really fascinating because we want to show our audiences that adventure is out there uh, in the digital and offline, and the two actually make it even better, and the flavor is even is even better. I f I'm so glad you brought that up because I find that really interesting. Um, that um, gaming and, as you said, the the online world and the offline world, right? The 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 online the the, the video game sport whether it's, you know, baseball or soccer or Formula One racing or anything, and the real world sport that it is based on have now almost in a way merged. There's almost no, I mean, obviously there's something different between, you know, a video game and real life, but, but the identities I feel like have merged together. And that I have to chalk up to the communicators like you in seeing that opportunity. Is that how you pursue it as an opportunity to, let's say, you know, at, a, at an actual Formula One race, promote a Formula One race video game that, that might be on your site? Definitely, because uh, this communication these days needs to be credible. It needs to be relevant. And there is no better way to actually communicate that via real role models, you know, via real heroes and real characters with stories behind. So there's this strong and very credible storytelling is an advantage, you know, and it's actually real, it's true. So we don't need to create anything specifically. We just need to uh, tell the story, you know, and maybe inspire others to follow and maybe get engaged even more. And I believe that, you know, brands these days need this approach to stay relevant, to stand, to stand out basically out of the crowd and, uh, and, get this loyalty behind. What are some of the other um, communication channels or vehicles that you use? I mean, is it is there earned, obviously you're doing advertising and you're doing online paid search and things like that. Are you using influencers? Are you doing earned media? What, what other types of vehicles and what yeah. types of audiences are you using to, are getting to with those vehicles? So basically this is uh, uh, quite complex because we've been uh, using this 360 marketing approach and we divide it basically in two main pillars communication wise. First one would be uh, raising awareness of our brand via specific mix of channels. Second would be driving sales. And when talking about, so the first one would impact the upper funnel basically attract uh, users to get um, uh, into this first contact with us, to jump on the website or the mobile application and to see what's out there. And of course, influencers see there as well or content creators, if you like. Uh, 
And then driving sales is a different uh, pillar, although the two very much are related, but are a little bit different because driving sales can get, as you said, through paid channels. And this is, you know, like the SAM and all this performance marketing, digital communication and all this advertisement uh, uh, on uh, those more popular channels, including Google, of course. Then this uh, paid social channels and all this advertisement in the social media, but also uh, what we do is the trade campaigns or seasonal campaigns, if you like, which are like the thematic campaigns. So, for example, it's back to school or it's a Halloween season or it's a holiday season or it's a summer uh, season. So basically something that is relevant in the given period of time and actually has an offering that matches the needs of this exact momentum. And then we create offerings and uh, promotions basically, or different type of uh, bundles, deals, for example, or deals as you like, to match those needs of the customers and uh, encourage them to actually jump in and purchase the products uh, they, they might need. And of course, you need a wide offering basically so they can choose between the product or they can create their own basket uh, based on their own needs. So uh, this personal, personalized communication via inbound channels. So our own channels such as marketing um, automation, which would be web pushes or SMSs or mailings is also crucial and it needs to be very strongly content-based as well. So basically they are uh, happy to return and, and open those emails all over again. Then it's definitely PR as well for us because we believe that it's very important to continue to build trust by telling our story, by, by saying transparently uh, what we've been doing or what we've been uh, seeing as a challenge or what and how we are actually trying to address it uh, these days or what are the most appealing um, things uh, coming up basically uh, or what we've got in the pipeline uh, and how to address all that. We've been doing marketing partnerships, you know, whether it's with other brands, or with uh, different organizations. Recently, we've been cooperation, cooperating with, uh, for example, brand uh, in Poland. Uh, it's a pizza brand where we had millions of discount codes printed on the boxes of pizza, where it was like an added value to the pizza customers, basically, where they can eat pizza and actually play games. So you, you know what I mean? This is the smart approach where you need to get and give this extra value to the customer and then actually earn uh, trust in return. I, okay, two observations. I love all that. Two observations there. One, stroke of genius putting a QR code on a pizza box because everybody yeah. knows that people are sitting at home and they're, they're gaming. They're doing like, you know, marathon gaming sessions and they're ordering pizza. That's yes. awesome. I love that. <laughs> Two, I find it really interesting that you called out the word when you talked about PR and you talked about earned media, that you called out the word trust. I find that really, I mean, you're building, and to me, you're building trust through, straight through your website with, you know, the satisfaction that your customers get when they come to your website, they make a purchase or whatever. Um, and it would seem like you're building trust in those interactions, but you you keyed in on PR as being the, the communications vehicle that delivers the trust. Can you yes. talk a little more about that? Definitely. So um, uh, what we've been doing, because actually my roots, I come from the PR and uh, PR as such is very important to me personally as well. But generally as a company, we believe that it's very important to talk to media, for example. So we do podcasts where we can actually share this vision, where we can actually discuss the most important current issues of the digital world or things coming up um, as, as trends or whatever. Then we uh, come up uh, and speak um, at different conferences, you know, where we actually share our expertise to make sure that we can use the power of digital that we represent to move the world forward and make it a better place, you know, because that's actually an ultimate mission to democratize the digital entertainment, as I said before. So this is important to share this. Then we also want to share different type of learnings uh, with the industry, uh, what works and what still needs to be, for example, addressed in the future to make it 
work even better for all of us. We invest in content uh, on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on those different uh, uh, portals, you know, where we can, again, share this knowledge and maybe inspire other generation just to use this digital content also responsibly. We uh, created in Spain, for example, we started uh, from Spain and then leveraged uh, uh, it globally, G2A Academy, a project in cooperation with professors and teachers where we showed the value of gaming in the process of learning. And it has been used since then by hundreds, if not thousands of teachers all around the world. And they say, wow, this is amazing how this can actually make our life easier, how it actually appeals to younger audiences. And they actually see the value in learning even more and better. So we try to show that certain stereotypes in gaming are not relevant while openly saying, okay, some are some are relevant and what to do to avoid that, you know, negative consequences, basically not to play uh, too long, you know, maybe uh, limit the space for kids in the internet for center titles. We, you know, like make all these notes very transparently on the, on the items we've been offering that which age is good or not, you know, and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, we, we are a responsible brand, we are a responsible uh, organization, uh, and uh, the business we've been actually doing, we want to make very uh, uh, responsible as well to, to everyone that we've been talking to. That's, that's this is how you earn trust, I believe, basically. Right, exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, let's just finish up the conversation here with the future of gaming. You talked a little bit about education there. You talked a little bit about women and girls in gaming. My daughter is a gamer. She loves playing her games. Oh, amazing. Right? My Fantastic. Best <laughs> Love it. Um, future of gaming. What's coming next? And of course, we got AI to sprinkle in here too. How does gaming yeah, change over the next 10 years? So basically, as you mentioned, I need to say that because AI uh, solutions actually already uh, play quite an important role in the gaming industry, both in the creation and development of games. Uh, and for example, many companies use it in this creative process, uh, you know, like generating ideas and then uh, all this behind. But recently, you know, that's very interesting, several developers informed that they would be using uh, actually artificial intelligence to generate an immersive experience by making NPCs react dynamically to your actions in game and issue different responses each time players interact with them. So then, uh, you know, it's like this immersive experience in video games will be like full. That's actually really big thing, I believe, coming up. Then, you know, it's not only AI limited to studios because some, some game uh, models have also used it recently, you know, successfully, like the plugin for Cyberpunk, for example, 2077, created by a modder fan, basically, which allows other creators to use chat GDP to generate many elements of the game, you know, like from NPCs dialogue to guest chains and environment responses, how amazing it is actually, you know, this, this world, this is like a future actually uh, uh, happening right now, right here. Several different AI engines are used actually, you know, these days at the same time as well. There is this new thing like XVA synth, you know, that generate voice response after learning the voice of an NCP NPC from a database of recordings. Wow, this is incredible. And actually, we really need to be very careful to stay, you know, relevant and just to follow this absolutely unbelievably rapid progress in all this. So I would say that gaming is getting even more uh, appealing, that it's getting even more entertaining, that it will be even more interactive. Uh, and uh, I would say that with the premiers coming up, um, even next year, you know, uh, that, uh, that this year, next year, this is pure adventure that you can actually get on and you can leave this adventure 
every day, basically. And it can be a really great entertainment, whether for a one person or a group of friends or families. It's now actually very democratic and accessible to everyone. And we've got it all. So jump on g2a.com and feel free to feel free to discover and explore uh, this amazing uh, world with us. That sounds so exciting, Mona. Thank you so much for, for giving us a little peek into that world. Uh, really you. appreciate all your insights and how you're communicating all that, all that terrific, uh, that terrific opportunity, I think, that people have. Because uh, I think gaming gets a little bit of a rap, and I think it's un completely unfounded. I'm, I'm a gamer myself. Now, I'm not crazy. You know, I don't spend hours and hours and hours, but I love playing video games. I think they're so much fun. I also think they're terrifically educational. I think they are Absolutely. connective. I I think they're just and and they are going to be um probably on the cutting edge of AI what we see in AI. They are going to be the most transformative evidence of AI, I think. Exactly. Perfectly said. Uh, I completely support what you have just said. Uh, and uh, actually, it's really interesting what's coming up. Uh, and I'm really happy that we can be part of it. And I'm looking forward to seeing all this and um, and actually participating in all this as well. So, yeah. <laughs> we are going to watch how things develop, Mona. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to segue now into the rapid fire question portion of our podcast. Okay, this is where I'm we ready. <laughs> This is where we steal a page from inside the Acker Studio. I'm still getting around to updating that reference. Uh, and ask our guests a series of rapid fire questions. You know what's okay. coming, Mona. We'll elicit a simple answer, maybe a laugh or two. Here we go. Mona Quinal, all the way from Spain. Rapid fire question number one. What is your favorite news source? Uh, okay, so um, it would be CNN when it comes to uh, this more general global news when it's uh, economical or uh, political. Then it would be linked in when it comes to uh, marketing or leadership related uh, content or news and uh, probably Instagram when it comes to lifestyle content. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite source of gaming information or gaming news? Oh, I would then definitely need to mention plenty, you know, because uh, we, as a PR, we've got a whole list of uh, the ones that we've right, been right. monitoring. So I would say all of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. All right. Rapid fire number two, uh, question number two. And we may need to take some answers from rapid fire question number one here. What is your favorite social media platform? Oh, that would be Instagram. Instagram, I, I still find a ton of fun, a ton of fun. Yeah, me too. And you know, I'm a surfer. It's my passion. And uh, the content of surfing from all over the world uh, that I actually can explore via Instagram is just amazing. So yes. Right. Uh, and I'm Generation X. So I guess it's also a kind of an explanation to that why it's still Instagram. There we go. There we go. Where, where do you go surfing in Spain? Uh, it's uh, play, it's mostly here at Tenerife, uh, here in uh, the south of Tenerife, El Medano, where I stay and I live. It's my primary spot. All right. I'm going to put it on my bucket list because I got bit by the surfing bu bug a couple of years ago. And I'm, okay. I'm coming over. Yeah, All right. Coffee. Rapid fire question. <laughs> rapid fire question number three. Coffee or alcohol? Oh, my God. I would say matcha latte. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sounds definitely. good. Rapid fire question number four. What is your favorite on the run food? Uh, so that would be a um, uh, bocadillo, which is this Spanish sandwich, uh, but uh, I don't eat meat. So it would be a uh, vega uh, bocadillo. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Rapid fire question number five. What do you want to be after you finish this career? I would say that I would love to continue to be happy and fulfilled as mom, partner, and surfer. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. I love it. Mona, this has been a great conversation. Please let people know how they can find you online. 
And so in terms of G2A.com, so it's uh, our um, website, our marketplace, then G2A.com, again, it would be our application. This time on all the social media, G2A.com. Uh, and myself, whether it's on uh, uh, Instagram, it's Monakinal, or whether it's a LinkedIn, it's again Monakinal. So simple as it is. <laughs> We will definitely look you up, Mona. Thanks again for joining us. Thank, you, Thank you, everyone, for listening. Please remember to subscribe to the show. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at The PR Podcast and send us a question or a comment. Our intro is by Christopher Appolt. You can find him and his fantastic photography on Instagram at Christopher underscore A-P-P-O-L-D-T. Check him out there and hire him for all your photography needs. You can find me online at Jody Fisher on all the socials and on the web at jodyfisherpr.com. We'll see you next time on the PR Podcast. <laughs>